So in this short video, I want to go through the process of validating our virtual work analysis using the free trust calculator on DegreeTutors.com. So here we are on the DegreeTutors website. So I'll show you how to get to the calculator if you're not familiar with it, if you haven't used it before. So on the top menu here, you can either click on tools or click on labs. So I'll just click on labs here and that takes us over to the Degree Tutors Labs platform, which is where all of the um, all of the member content uh, lives. Uh, so within this platform here, we can go and click on structure works in the left hand menu. So structure works is what I'm calling all of the um, well, currently it's only one tool, but it will be multiple analysis tools that will live here eventually. And um, so now we can see the tools and um, let's click on the 2D trust analysis toolbox and that takes us into the toolbox here. So I'll just minimize that, give ourselves a bit more space. All right, so this is a fairly standard um, trust calculator. If you've used any trust calculator online, there's plenty of them out there. And um, this pretty much works the same way. So what we have to do, we've got a, a 3D view here. Now currently it's set to 2D, but we could we could manipulate that view um, with the mouse, but so we don't need to at the minute because it's 2D structure we're analyzing. We have a control panel on the right. So let's skip on down here to our data input. So what we have to do here is input nodal information, element information, so the members of the structure, restraint data and load data. Now, um, if you haven't used this before, obviously I'm gonna show you how to use it now, but equally, if you click on this button here, you can see a tutorial video, which is just me talking you through the process of analyzing a structure, just like I'm about to do now. So you can watch that as well if you want another example. But equally, what's kind of handy is if you click on this example data button, that will open up a Google Sheet, which has all of the data for two structures, actually, this one and this one. So that's a much bigger structure which you can you can run um right so what you're looking at here is how we define the data for a structure right so we've got our nodes defined here then our members then our supports and then our forces so what i suggest you do is if you're analyzing your own structure open up this sheet and basically do what i've done here basically copy all of this over into a blank spreadsheet over here which is what i've done i've then deleted out the data that sort of default sample data here and I've put in my own data for the specific structure that we're going to be analyzing right so that's what this sheet is helpful for so if I go back over to our calculator now I'll just talk through this data right so we've got to we've got to specify the nodal locations right so what are the the positions of each of the nodes in our structure we number them sequentially sort of seven nodes so one to seven and then we've got the x and y coordinate of each of our nodes okay so these are the coordinates for the actual structure that we we analyze in our virtual work tutorial uh, and so we can take these and not the headings here not those but just the actual data itself so literally control C and come on down and paste that directly into the nodal coordinates box now you could you can type those numbers in manually and what I find and um, it's just so much easier quicker less prone to errors if you just do it in a spreadsheet like this and then just copy it in because you avoid any issues around trailing commas or spaces or you know silly little issues like that so that's your your nodal data so you can see straight away the nodes appear up here now the scale the default scale is not helping us out here it's too small so we can change the scale of our elements here by coming over to the scale slider and just changing it here so i'm going to change that to two and we can see our nodes appear a bit more a bit easier to see Okay, next up, we want to define the members that make up our structure. And again, this is all relatively standard, right? So we've got a row for each member. We've got members one to 10. Then we're defining the node number at each end of the member, right? So one, two, two, three, etc., etc. Again, it's relatively straightforward. Um, then we've got Young's modulus. This value matches the value that we used in our tutorial. Um, and then we've got the cross-sectional area of each element individually defined. Now they're all the same in this case. Um, but again, that matches what we did in our tutorial. And we've got yield stress. You just have to have a number in there. That's not actually used in the calculation yet. That's sort of for a future update that um, I'll be making to the calculator when I eventually get around to making it. Um, so don't worry about that. Just put in a number, probably leave it at the default number to be honest. Uh, and then you've got self-weight. Again, it's not used in the calculation yet. Uh, and so just leave the default number, it's fine. But do put a number in. So when all of the with all the members defined, we can take all of that and bring it over and just paste it in there. And we can see, you see our members appear up here. Okay, that's fine. Right, next up, we want to define our supports. 
our structure had three supports, right? So it had at node one, it had a roller. So it was, it was free in the X, restrained in the Y. So that's what the false and true indicate. Uh, at node three, we had a pin. So restrained, restrained. And at node six, we had another roller. So unrestrained, restrained. Okay, so we wanna take that, copy, and drop it straight in there. And we can see our supports appear in our 3D view as well. And then the final thing that we ought to do is we've got to indicate the location and magnitudes of any loads. So it was only one load in this case, which was on node seven here, and it was a hundred kilonewtons. So a hundred thousand newtons in the downward, so negative Y direction. So copy that, paste it in there, and we can see our force appear there. Okay, so there we have it. So we don't need this anymore. So we'll just maximize that screen. Okay, so that is all of our data entry set up. So now all we have to do is actually just submit this um, to be solved. And so we just click the solve button. So what that will do is take all this data, package it up, fire it off to a server, crunch some numbers on the server, and we'll send the data back. And then you'll be able to view it in the, uh, in the 3D view here. So let's just hit solve. And there we go. So analysis report received. That's fine. Okay, so now all the data is here. All we have to do is uh, investigate it. And that's what the 3D view is really, really handy for. So <clears throat> what was the first thing we wanted to check? We wanted to check our reactions, right? Because we calculated the reaction here, the vertical reaction here to be uh, 200 uh, newton, kilonewtons. So let's just confirm that that's what it is. And there you have it, 200,000 newtons, 200 kilonewtons. Brilliant. Now we can show our axial forces within the structure by just clicking on the axial force diagram and we get a binary map initially, which is just red for compression, blue for tension. And we can switch that to a continuous color map where these colors in the structure map down to this color map down here. And so the color intensity is indicating the magnitude of force, that's fine. Um, that's not really what we wanted to confirm though. What we really wanted to check now is the displacement because our, our whole, our main, the main trust of our, of our virtual work analysis was to determine the vertical displacement of node four here. So if I go ahead, first of all, and uh, in fact, sure, while I'm here, I might as well turn it on. There's our magnet, the magnitude of our axial forces as well. So anyway, back to the deflection. If I turn on the deflected shape, initially, we're not going to see anything because its scale is one. So it's very, very small by comparison to the scale of the structure. Uh, but if I increase that to, let's try 20, that's fine. We can see the green outline, which is the deflected shape. And we can see, sure enough, we have a vertical deflection of node four here upwards, um, which is exactly what our uh, virtual work analysis indicated as well. So that's that's just what we want to see. But that's just a qualitative deflected shape. What we really want to check is what's the number, like what, what actual value of deflection is occurring at that location. And so in order to do that, we can scroll on down to our tabulated data. So all of the data that's shown here visually is all reflected um, in tables down here. So what we've got is, um, let me see, reactions table. We're fine, we don't need to look at that now. We've got our axial forces, don't need to look at that either. Uh, and what we have, what we really wanna look at here is our nodal displacements, right? So what have we got? We're focusing in on node four here. And we can see that the Y displacement of node four is uh, 0.108 meters, uh, which is exactly what our virtual work analysis gave us. Now, the number here is positive because in this analysis tool, the uh, positive um, upwards is positive and downwards is negative. Uh, and so that is indicating an upwards deflection of node four of 0.108 meters, which is perfect. It's validation. It means that the analysis that we did agrees with this analysis. This analysis is performed just using a different technique. And so this whole calculator is built on the um, direct stiffness method. Uh, and so again, it's nice to, to get some validation uh, using a different, just using a different technique. Now, interestingly enough, we can see here that we also have a horizontal displacement of node four of 0 0.01 meters, so about a tenth of the vertical displacement. And our virtual work analysis uh, didn't reveal that to us or wasn't able to reveal that to us. Uh, and so it's about a tenth of the vertical displacement. And so it is reasonable, um, I suppose you could say, because it is, is small or you might argue insignificant by comparison to the vertical displacement, it's reasonable that it is neglected in our virtual work analysis. But it is important to appreciate it is there. It's not It's not zero. It is a non-zero uh, horizontal displacement of node four. So if we go back up, can we see that displacement? We can kind of see if there's node four. Yeah, you can see, you know, you can make out visually a lateral displacement of node four, but very obviously the vertical displacement visually, we can see it is far, far greater. 
So that's it basically. You have a way of putting into this calculator the structures that you perform virtual work analysis on, analysis on and you can compare your results uh, with the results from the calculator. And so in that way you can validate uh, your results and you basically have the ability to come up with an infinite number of test questions yourself um, so that you can practice and get better and more comfortable with the virtual work method. Um, right, so that's basically all I wanted to show you. So feel free to crunch through as many examples in this calculator as you like and share it with whoever else you like, it's free. Uh, right, so I'll see you in the next tutorial.